just read that this is the first time in MLS history a club has come back from 3 nothing to win in regulation. What sort of emotions go into this as, as a coach? Uh, the emotion now is one of relief. Um, the first thing that, that, that popped into my head uh, as the game was progressing and then after the game was, you know, what do we do as a staff? How did we, you know, manage the group and training with the little mini break that we had? Um, so the first emotion was just reflection. Uh, what could we have done better? Uh, relief that we won, we, you, know, you know, made some plays. Uh, and then the second one is I was very proud of the guys. That's my second emotion. Uh, the guys never quit. You know, we, we've witnessed a lot with this franchise over the years. And in my time here, uh, you know, the game down in Portland, you know, the, the, the win in L.A., uh, some of those moments that are you know, just indicative of this team never, ever giving up. That's what makes me, you know, proud to be part of this franchise. Maz, I saw your hand. Yeah, hey, Brian. Um, in the first half, you passed, you had 342 passes. Second half, you had 186 passes, and yet you scored four goals. What does that say about the type of passes, or does it you had in the second half? It's, uh, Maz, this game is irrelevant, really. <laughs> the stats are irrelevant. I mean, it's a crazy game. I mean, yeah, you look at our first half and we pass the ball up, but where were the passes? They're all back, square, negative, you know, it just wasn't working. Uh, second half, when the guys were driving the ball forward to get back in the game, those, it just, the stats match just the way the game was played. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put much into this game statistically. I think it's just more, again, just on the mindset of the group you know, being able to persevere and, you know, all the passing stats, all the, you know, goals and assists, you know, isn't the real storyline of the game. But the four threes is the storyline. Well, the, yes, the goals are, yes, they are. Uh, but the passing's not. Yeah. The possession percentage, you know, all that sort of stuff. Normally, I talk to you guys about duels won and, you know, stuff like that. I mean, that was pretty close. You know, I mean, we've had games early in the year where we outpass teams by three or four hundred passes, and we haven't got results. So, I just think the stats are relevant here. Thank you. Jeff, you brought in uh, Leardam and Nuhu at the same time, and it really seemed to change the tempo of the game. What, what were you looking for to get out of those two guys, and, and what do you think they they did to impact uh, what you saw on the field? Um, <clears throat> well. Kelvin is a, a talented player, and you guys saw what he can bring. Uh, we just needed to get more attacking movements up the field. Um, knew who you guys have seen before. I think he and Joven on that left-hand side make a pretty potent combination. Uh, so I was just basically trying to get some energy and some more uh, dynamic, I would say, attacking movements out wide because they were defending inside out. You know, they had the lead, they were protecting their goal. So we needed to do something out in the wing channels to break them down. And I think, uh, you know, both Nuhu and Kelvin helped us do that. Michelle? When you have a goalkeeper like Tyler Miller come into a game and have an opportunity like this that he doesn't normally get with Stephen Fry being so solid, and then the outing is as such, even though he gets a win, he gives up three goals. Do you worry that instead of moving forward and being like, okay, I got these minutes under my belt, that there's maybe a step back? And if so, how do you address that? Kind of what's your message to him? Uh, I'm not worried about it, Michelle, because he's a tough kid. Uh, he's got the right mindset. All goalkeepers have that, you know, mindset that they have to move forward. I mean, when they make mistakes, it, it usually ends up, right? So they have to have a strong mindset. Now, in defense of Tyler, I'm not so sure that those goals were his fault. I would say that those are team goals. So I don't think that I will 
watch the tape and be overly critical, yeah, we'll use it as a learning moment. What could he have done? But, you know, I'm not really concerned about that. And, <clears throat> you know, Tommy does a great job with him, so he, he'll be fine. He'll be good. Yeah, Jeff. What, what was going on with the defenders in the first half? It looked like they were getting caught flat-footed midfield at times, getting guys run right by them. And, and was it was it the layoff? Was it a lack of communication? Maybe with a new keeper in there as well? Or? No, I don't think it had anything to do with the new keeper, Jeff. I think we were a little rusty. I, I would say we were a little rusty, and that's where again I have to, you know, I have to accept responsibility for how we trained and and what we did, and we will correct it. We will watch the film as always, and we will correct it. Harvey. Coach, when I was looking down at the bench right before that first goal, I only saw Nuhu pulling on his top. Was the double sub always the plan, or did the goal change that? And if so, how? Uh, our first goal. Yes. Double sub was always planned. Um, after they scored the first goal, you know, uh, you just need to take some time to see, okay, maybe this group is doing it. Maybe, maybe they're going to try and, you know, work it out themselves. Um, but then at the end of the day, I, I, I you know, want to just go with my gut instinct just to change the game a little bit. Spencer, you still have one? Yeah, uh, Coach, in real time, were you able to see enough of Ladero's red card to have an opinion about it? No. I will uh, thank you for asking that question, though. <clears throat> I will say this. So whatever happened on the play, whether he kicked out or, you know, whatever, uh, he feels gutted for the team. You know, he feels like he let the team down. Uh, but what we have to understand is that Sarvis and those guys were chasing him around the field and kicking him every time they could. And so it's sometimes human nature that you get frustrated and you do things that you shouldn't. And I will address that with him. I already addressed it in front of the group, but I'll address it with him in private as well. And I don't, I don't feel like I don't feel like he was protected enough today. I don't. And so, you know, that, that's, it's, it's something that I can't accept because he shouldn't have done it, but I do have some s sympathy for him. Mr. Rocha, Well, to follow up on that, that's a couple of games in a row now, Colorado and here. What can you do but voice your displeasure to the league? Control of controllables. I would like the players to protect their teammates. I will do whatever I can to, you know, make sure I protect the team. And, you know, we just have to play. Refereeing's not easy, especially in, you know, late in the season and games that are m more meaningful. So it's not easy for them. But the overall, the overall tenor of the last two games I think has been a little too physical for my liking. All four of your goal scorers are hard workers, but Roll Don wins it at the end. <laughs> you don't have a problem talking about Roll Don. Can you talk about his week playing for the U.S. and coming back? And you pushed him forward, it looked like, but his second half performance? Uh, I can talk, okay, maybe back to front. So Christian's last goal was tremendous. It was a tremendous effort, good, good assist by Will, but Christian did most of the heavy lifting. Um, you know, Christian has a really, really bright future. We all know that. We all see it. I thought Nico's corner with Gustav, we were aiming for that near post. They were just off base uh, on a couple other, on a couple corner kicks. So Gustav and Nico, they finally connected. Um, Brad Evans' goal. I mean, Brad had done everything he could to get himself ready for the game. Uh, Joven's cross. I told Brad when I pushed him up a line to get on the end of some of those crosses because he's obviously very good in the air and he's, got, and he's goal dangerous. So I think that was great. And Will starting us off, I mean, that's just what Will does. I mean, he scores goals. Ryan, you saw one? Yeah. Coach, it was such a wildly emotional night, but you guys still have a game on Sunday. How can you carry this momentum with you into the weekend? Uh, well, I, I think the guys are uh, relieved like I was, and they were obviously uh, 
put their heart and soul into this match. Uh, had the result gone not our way, I think I would have been, you know, still proud of the effort they showed in the second half, but getting the actual victory uh, really kind of should, and I think will, buoy them going into the San Jose game. Uh, as a staff, what we will do is, as always, we'll, we'll watch the tape and, you know, correct some of the mistakes that we see. But overall, I felt that this could be a really uh, defining moment for this season to, you know, come back from 3 nothing down and, you know, the way we did it, how they did it, the effort they put in, the, the thinking that they put in, I thought it was pretty tremendous. All right. Stretch actually. Yeah, no problem. Felipe. So, Coach, um, uh, he was a second half, uh, unforgettable for the history. And then everybody, uh, the way the, the balls came in, in line, the uh, defense. The fans were crazy when the first ball came. And then the second ball. And what, you, what can you tell me about uh, Brad Evans' uh, celebration, ball celebration? I'm not sure of the question. Yeah, when Brad Evans scored, he point he, he put his finger on his mouth like this. I'll ask him. I mean, Brad is is a guy who has done everything for this club uh, since 2009. And yes, certainly there's there's issues there with the signing of Kelvin. But Brad is a pro, a very good pro. And he will do whatever it takes to help this team win a championship. I can guarantee you that. So whatever else, whatever other motions, ideas, whatever he has, you know, I don't, I don't put much stock into that. You see on the field every time he steps on the field with that jersey on that he will play to the best of his abilities, and that's why we have a lot of respect for Brett. Nico. What was it about your arrangements in the second half that made uh, your offensive triangle more effective? Was it the fact that you had a guy like Joey Jones that could stretch the defense a little more? What, what was it? At halftime, we switched more to almost like a 4-3-3 or, you know, we had Gustav sitting right on top of the center backs and pushed Christian on with Nico and then had, you know, Kovar, Ship and Bruin up front. Uh, then we scored the first goal. And then when we made the subs, we went back to our normal 4-2-3-1. And that's where we got the width. And that's, you know, more of our standard formation, the, stand, the, the formation that those guys are used to. But in the beginning of the second half, I wanted Christian to help Nico press higher up the field, see if we couldn't generate something. But, you know, at the end of the day, when we went back to our, you know, usual formation, I thought it worked very well. You said that you don't want to focus too much on the, the stats and, and how they kind of play out. But when you look at a game like this in the first half where you, I mean, you guys held at one point about 80% possession. Um, you had some of the same things in the New England game. We've seen a couple times on the road that's happened. How do you go about changing something when on paper there doesn't seem to be anything wrong? Well, I think what, what, what you see in those statistics uh, and, and certainly if you go into the, 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 the stats, you know, you get final third entries and, and some of the stuff that uh, Ravi Ravameni and Dave and his sports science staff, those guys pick out for us as coaches. I think you can see that the majority of our passes, again, were here. So what we as coaches have to do is, again, watch the film and help the players figure out a way how to get in behind their back four. Because as we got in behind their back four, it turns the defense, you know, they have to recover, and it creates more difficulty for them. So all of the passing stats and a guy being, you know, okay, maybe a guy has 98% of his passes completed. Well, if it's just a pass right to here and right to there, it doesn't matter. I mean, I need the pass to go there. I need that pass to be made. Toby, and then maybe one or two follow-ups if we have time. Uh, coach, seven different players involved in scoring today. We have a sister goal. Um, given how difficult that's been, um, how much of a confidence boost is that going forward? Well, yeah, I, I, it's a good question because we have had our challenges scoring goals, although 
you know, we, we were scoring a few more goals recently as of late, and now to score four, it's obviously very good. Uh, you know, again, you know, I think this team's a pretty talented team. And, you know, whatever challenges we faced early in the year, hopefully we can overcome them. And, you know, even missing Jordan and Deuce, uh, you know, we were able to generate enough chances to score four. So that's a, that's, that's a good sign. Follow-up, Smaz, you still have one? Yeah, it was really just a question on Will Bruin and kind of we talked about what makes him so special up there and his ability to get behind players. Um, can you elaborate on his ability to score? Well, we goals? talked about it. We talked about it at practice yeah, about how good he is in the box and what did he do today? He was uh, well, and, and he was good inside the 18-yard box. I mean, he scored and... You know, his assist, you know, was a little outside of the box. But, I mean, Will's good at what he does. He's in the box. He, he chases after crosses. We didn't, we didn't give him any crosses or any quality crosses in that first half. Uh, but Joven's ball was, was a, a great, great assist. And that's the kind of ball Will loves. I mean, he can get up and attack it, and it was a good goal. Jackson. Coach, you talked about Christian uh, and his performance tonight. Did you see anything specific out there tonight that he may have picked up or really improved upon from his time with the U.S. Men's National Team recently? Um, maybe not in the soccer department because I've seen Christian play at a high level and I think he deserves to be in that national team conversation. I think he was just a little more motivated. I felt his uh, one chance before he scored the last goal, some of his attacking movements, you know, I thought those were pretty good. Gustav did a good job of kind of holding down the fort. And, you know, like when when we tactically moved him up a line, he showed that he was capable of being more than just like a true number six. You know, he really has the depth of his game to not only defend and cover people when they go forward like he's done all season, but he also has that ability to, you know, generate offense and, and generate scoring chances as well. Last one to our friends at the Sports Media Institute who are visiting us today. Tristan, are you going to take this one? Yes. Um, do you think that red card on Ladera will be affecting your game plan for the, the upcoming match in San Jose, against San Jose? Excuse me. Obviously, when you lose a good player, uh, it's, it's, it's a challenge. Uh, but again, our mantra has been all year, next man forward. So we've missed important players throughout the course of this year and throughout the course of our you know, MLS career, and we just deal with it. And we'll devise a game plan for San Jose, and, you know, we'll see if we can't get a result then as well.